Good evening and welcome to WTOP 10 Nightly News. I'm Seth Prevertil. And I'm Madison Doner. Today, rapper Kanye West met with President Donald Trump to discuss why he supports the Republican Party. The meeting focused on urban revitalization, potential future clemencies, and crime in Chicago. Kanye is currently focusing on the clemency of Larry Hoover, who is serving life in a supermax facility. Kanye says, it's very important for me to get Hoover out because in an alternate universe, I am him and I have to go and get him free because he was doing positive inside of Chicago, just like how I'm moving back to Chicago. Another topic discussed was the detriment of applying stop and frisk policing policies in Chicago. The president said during the White House meeting that he's totally open to an alternative to stop and frisk and that we all agree to have to do something. Oswego Mayor Billy Barlow announces the winning project selected for downtown revitalization initiative. According to Oswego County Today, $545,000 was distributed between 20 retail and commercial spaces. Barlow says the downtown improvement fund was designed to give existing small business owners an opportunity to apply for grant funding assistance to help with facade projects, building renovations, vacant conversions, or business expansion opportunities. The winning projects are expected to gain $1.2 million in private investments and are compliable in the original City of Oswego Downtown Revitalization Initiative application. Governor Cuomo cautions New Yorkers when registering to vote after an over-the-phone voter registration scam. According to a press release, the scam has been reported in Cheming and Steuben counties. Cuomo says residents are receiving calls from area code 607, which requests personal information. The last day to register to vote before next month's gubernatorial race is tomorrow, October 12th. We have reporter Eric Jurgowski in the WTOP office to discuss a local theater group. Eric? For the month of October, a small company named Theater Du Jour is putting up an interactive musical murder mystery across central New York. I was able to go into, this, into the rehearsal earlier this week. Let's take a look. Come one, come all to the local touring dinner, theater, musical, interactive experience that is Bullets for Broadway, filled with music, amazing local talent, comedy, romance, and a surprising murder mystery. It's a dinner, theater, murder mystery. Um, there's all kinds of twist plots and crazy things going on and you never know what's going to come at you next. It's really interactive theater at its best. This show is filled with romance and tons of comedy that will make you laugh yourself right out of your seat. I am playing Toffee Alto in this production. She's a girl from Jersey who married the, into the mob. Um, her husband is Tony Alto, and thanks to him, she was able to fulfill a lifelong dream of being a star on Broadway. I thought it'd be fun to be Tammy Wilkinson, founder of Theatre Du Jour, started the company to bring more theater into the community. We were bringing shows um, to the Oswego Players. My role there was also producer. Um, we were having a little bit of a challenge getting butts in the seats, and so we had the idea to bring them um, out into the community. Make sure you have reservations for this show, because this is one you won't want to miss. Bullets for Broadway starts on Monday, October 11th in Mexico and runs through October 26th in Fulton. Tickets are $60 and can be ordered online at DuJourCNY.com. Have you ever been to one of those, a murder mystery? You know, I've been to a murder mystery, but I can't say that I've been to a musical murder like mystery. Like an interactive one? No, this is, this is definitely a unique experience, so something you should definitely check out. Definitely forward. sounds interesting. <laughs> Different in us we go. Teen pregnancy rates in the county have decreased in the past 10 years, as Shelby Vassaluth explains. Oswego County is also on the downward trend. In Oswego County, teen pregnancy rates are higher than most parts of New York State. Resources in town and at Oswego High School are taking steps in health classes to discuss challenges teen parents face. 
Oswego High School graduate Gregory Castor says classmates becoming pregnant changed the social environment of the school. How people acted with them, talked to them, how they responded to them, pretty much changed a lot of things. Like if somebody was pregnant, we knew it. Everyone was just like, okay, you're, you're different now. You're not one person, you're two kind of thing. Oswego has its very own pregnancy care center located across the street from Oswego High School. Client Services Director Teresa Wilkins says it offers resources at four locations throughout the county. Uh, free pregnancy testing, um, free parenting classes, and then if uh, people take the free parenting classes, they can get free material items like diapers, wipes, formula, um, baby food, clothing, blankets, um, and they can even buy new things like uh, larger items like strollers, cribs, and, and things like that. Local churches such as Elm Greece donate baby formula, diapers, and clothing to the Pregnancy Care Center. In 2007, teen pregnancy in the county reached its peak of about 42 per 1,000 girls. Since then, the number has gone down to about 32 per 1,000. In the past five years, over 120 teenagers have used the Pregnancy Care Center for its services. Wilkins says some of these very clients tend to come back because of the relationships they build with their staff. You know, we build relationships here. We're based on, you know, volunteers. Our volunteers are the ones that mostly meet, and they meet because meet with the, the clients because they care about them. So it's not, you know, j their job. It's, it's what they want to do. And so the clients know how much they're cared about here, and so they like to come back. Most evidence from the Centers of Disease Control and Prevention points towards teens abstaining from sexual activity and an increase in the use of preventatives. Shelby Vasluth, WTOP10. For more information on Oswego Pregnancy Care Center, you can find them at www.oswegopregnancy.com. Coming up later tonight, I sat down with Oswego Mayor Billy Barlow. And sports with John Perdick. Now let's take a look at the weather with Storm Team 10 meteorologist Kayla Wheeler. Kayla, how's it looking? Thanks, guys. Well, things here in Oswego are cooling down with a current temperature of 62 degrees and high 50s and low 60s across the state. As you can see, around here things are getting quite windy with winds around 17 miles per hour and slowing down as you move away from the lake. Now for the rest of tonight, winds will be anywhere from 15 to 25 miles per hour with a low of 49 and it's going to be cloudy. Now, will this extended summer stay or are we finally going to get into fall? Stay tuned for my forecast after the break. You're watching WTOP 10 Nightly News. My name is Gina Iliev. I am the Health Equity Coalition's coordinator at Planned Parenthood here in Central and Western New York. I'm also executive master's in public administration here at the Maxwell School, Syracuse University. In the last couple years, you've seen a number of movements, and I'm sure you've seen all the hashtags that go along with it. Um, I think it's really important to talk about what those hashtags mean, what, and then once we garner that power through those um, media avenues, how do we really activate people on the ground and in real life? I'm really looking forward to learning from the other panelists to what they do. Um, I work for a you know, local nonprofit, and some of the other panelists are from very big corporations. And I'm really interested in how they navigate those spaces. What do those connections look like?
Welcome back from the break. I'm your Storm Team 10 meteorologist, Kayla Wheeler. Taking a look at tonight's headlines, we'll be monitoring now tropical storm Michael. Temperatures will be cooling down. We'll be looking at uh, this weekend, Saturday soaker, and how showers will return into next week. Now, as I was mentioning, Hurricane, or excuse me, Tropical Storm Michael, winds are at about 50 miles per hour right now with gusts at 70. This is about 100 miles per hour slower than when he hit the United States. Now, for the next couple of days, we're looking how Michael moves up to the northeast. He will be leaving the United States by, the, by Friday afternoon and he will be giving us some, wind, some strong winds into tomorrow. Now taking a look at tonight's current temperatures. Here in Oswego, we're about 60 degrees, low 60s and high 50s across the board. Zooming out, we see a greater range of temperatures. So in Fulton, around 59, increasing as you get to the eastern part of the state and decreasing as you get to the western. Now, over the past 24 hours, temperatures, or excuse me, sorry, for the last, or this time tonight, or at this time yesterday, temperatures were about 13 degrees warmer, so about 73 degrees. Now, as I mentioned earlier, is fall finally here? I think this explains it. So we're seeing about a 13 degree temperature difference into tomorrow morning. You're going to want to bring that rain jacket. It's going to be rainy with scattered showers throughout the day into Friday afternoon, clearing up a little bit into, however, for tomorrow's, um, for tomorrow's commute, tomorrow night, you'll be need also needing a rain jacket because there will be scattered showers with lake effect snow. And However, if you're going out Friday night, you're also going to want to bring a rain jacket. Things aren't clearing out yet because right, to the, uh, right south of us, we will be seeing some rain. And into Saturday morning, that rain will be getting heavier and into with scattered showers throughout Saturday afternoon into Saturday evening. Now for tonight. Low of 49 degrees, cloudy skies, winds picking up to 15 to 25 miles per hour coming from, out, coming from the west, northwest. Again, 15 to 25 mile per hour winds tomorrow, cloudy skies and a high of 52, so not much more than it is right now. And into tomorrow night, showers, we'll be seeing showers in a low of 43 degrees. Looking at the next seven days, as I mentioned before, rain on Saturday into Sunday, it looks like it's gonna be a nice day, and Monday, Monday through Wednesday, some more showers. You're watching WTOP 10 Nightly News. More news and sports after the break. And then she was like, yeah, and I was like, no. And then she was like, yeah, and I was like, yeah. Oh my God. Oh my God, what? Ryan just texted me. Oh my god, what did he say? Netflix and chill? Netflix and chill, that's like so last year. It's all about WTOP movies on demand and chill. You are so right. <laughs> Yo, bro, what's wrong? Yo, bro, my girl left me, bro. But why? Because I don't watch WTOP 10 Movies on Demand. This new dad is picturing a tree house in the sky. But, but he's, he's ignoring, ignoring the instructions. instructions. Good luck, big guy. His kids know that he's building without a clue. Never been so good with nails and glue. Now we're trapped inside a box. I hope mom knows what to do. See, you don't have to be perfect to be the perfect parent. Thousands of siblings in foster care will take you just as you are. Hey, it's Ava and this is Tess from Do Your Selfie, where we recreate the hottest looks from today's biggest music videos. After cleaning out our closet, we have a lot of clothes we don't wear anymore. Like this old pile of t-shirts. It's not garbage, it's actually a new rug. And to make it, all you need to do is cut, tie, and glue. Cut the t-shirt into strips. Tie the strips into knots and glue the knots to the bath mat. I love it. Give your garbage another life and recycle. I'm here sitting down with Mayor Billy Barlow, the mayor of Oswego. He's taken time out of his day to come speak with us. Thank you for coming. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. So um, just to start off the interview, election season is coming up. 
So I guess the first question I do have for you today is why is it important for people to vote in the congressional race coming up? I think any election matters. Uh, in fact, I, sometimes I argue that uh, even local and state politics sometimes is more important than uh, federal politics because state government and local government has an even closer effect on an individual's life. But anyway, the the congressional race is uh, it's interesting. I think it's about the quality of representation, and I think it's always important for whoever the representative is, again at any level, to make sure they are in Oswego often, uh, listening to all groups, right? You want to hear uh, what groups of women have to say. You want to hear small business owners. You want to hear manufacturers. You want to hear what the local electeds are saying. Uh, and we've had congressional uh, candidates uh, and members before who you know, we didn't even know who they were or what they were doing. And uh, I think that's what I always look for in a candidate for any office. How visible are they? Are they hardworking? And how true do they are in representing their district? Uh, what are some things that have that has happened during your term as mayor that you think have been really successful into shaping what you feel as though is best for the community? I think first and foremost uh, maybe the heaviest lift, I'm not sure, uh, it's probably the proudest accomplishment I have as well, but the heaviest lift was our code enforcement work. Uh, city landlords had control of city politics for 30, 40, 50 years. And you saw what that did to the quality of neighborhoods in the city of Oswego. It made us a uh, not so attractive place to live and try to attract families. Uh, I think that's why the growth uh, has decreased in the last 30 years. Uh, you saw the, you see the quality of, of uh, housing that some students and lower income individuals uh, get stuck in and their landlord becomes unresponsive and you also see how expensive the rents can be. So it was a very dynamic and complex problem and uh, one of my biggest campaign platforms was taking back uh, the housing stock in the city, trying to offer quality housing, holding landlords accountable and standing up for tenants rights including students. I think we've changed the culture in the city uh, 10 times over. Uh. When you were elected, I know at age was a big, a big topic of discussion during your election. And um, you became the youngest mayor of New York State at the time, and you're representing a much younger generation. Uh, in that sense, you're part of a younger generation. What advice do you have for maybe younger voters who are kind of hesitant to, to get involved in politics, given that there is a lot of political tension going on nowadays? I think you need to have your voice heard, and our generation is going to have to step up and lead eventually. Uh, you see a lot younger people getting in, in politics, and that's a very good sign. I think for the most part, when you see a younger person step into any seat, especially an executive seat, um, they tend to be more anxious uh, and more fast-paced, uh, and I think that usually turns into results and I think that's a, a quality hopefully my constituents would would say that about me is that my age my energy makes me want things quicker uh, and in, in government that's always a good thing to speed up the pace but um, we're at a place now where uh, it's harder to find common ground I think each side of the political aisle only wants to hear the voices that their message suits and they don't really care what it means for the other side of the aisle or for minorities or for women or for uh, whoever, any, any other group. So um, it's important that we come up and try to take back the system, in my view, and just stay honest and uh, bring the, the issues that matter to the forefront, fight for what we believe in and what we want to see. I always uh, bring up an interesting point is that young people, who argu arguably over time have the most to lose. I'm going to be in Oswego until I'm 80 years old, right? So that's over 50 years from now. People who are 50, 60, 70 aren't going to be around that long to see some of the changes in policies uh, and the effects and impacts they have. So young people who arguably have the most to lose sometimes are the least engaged, and we really need to change that, that trend, and I think it is slowly changing. Well, perfect. That's about all that I got today. I want to thank you so much for sitting down and, Thanks for and joining having me. Yeah, Pleasure of course. To be here. Once again, Billy Barlow, the mayor of Oswego, sitting down talking with us. Thank you again. Thanks.
everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. Welcome back to WTOP. I'm your sports anchor, John Perdak. Oswego's women's volleyball took a loss yesterday to Nazareth College in a three set to one outing. After a nine point defeat in the first set, it was a back and forth battle in the second set, but Nazareth ended up pulling away. Ava Sullivan led the charge for the Lakers with eight kills and four blocks. Emily Costa also had 14 digs. The Lakers will host a quad this weekend against St. John Fisher, Union College, and SUNY Oneana. Also on Wednesday, the Oswego State lacrosse team finished their fall season with a scrimmage against Kesvonia College and SUNY Polytechnic Institute. It was the team's final test for the fall before they transitioned to the spring season. The scrimmage also served as a fundraiser for the Wilmont Cancer Institute, as admissions to the scrimmage were free and went towards, the, towards Wilmont. This is the 10th straight year Oswego has had the green gold pink game and is the third going up against other schools. In professional sports, the New York Knicks star power forward Christos Porzingis is still facing injury protocol, but is looking to be more optimistic about it. Head coach David Fizel says that he needs to focus with his leadership, being present, and also helping the young big guys. Porzingis is still recovering from his ACL surgery. The Knicks have their season opener Wednesday, October 17th against the Atlanta Hawks. Without the Knicks big man on the, in the fold, it will be tough to get off to a good start. In football news, the New York Giants look to make a statement tonight going head-to-head -head against the Philadelphia Eagles. The Giants lost last week to the Carolina Panthers in a 33-31 heartbreak, ended on a field goal. The Giants dropped to 1-4 and, and considering this game tonight as a must-win. This is one of the most anticipated games in the NFL considering this great rivalry. In the NHL, there is a preseason class between the Golden Knights and the Capitals. At the end of the first period, Evgeny Kuznetsov strikes a wrister, giving the Capitals a 1-0 lead. Beginning of the second period, the Capitals race on a 2-1 fast break as Kuznetsov feeds it to Alexander Ovenshin for a goal, putting Washington up 2-0, propelling them off to a great start. The LA Golden Knights, trying to scratch their way back in the second, Cody Aiken wraps all the way around the goal and bangs it in. This brings the Knights closer with trailing 2-1. Beginning of the third period, Kuznetsov passes the puck over to Nicholas Backstrom, on a giving the captain Capitals a 3-1 lead. Capitals seem to be running away at this point. Golden Knights still pushing the envelope midway through the third period as Riley Smith scores a big, big one for the Knights, making it the score 3-2. Alexander Ovenchkin on the break later in the third puts the icing on the cake as he gives the Capitals a commanding 4-2 lead, closing out the rematch of the last year's finals. 
Hockey season right around the corner. Hockey season. Laker hockey coming up, too. Laker hockey coming up. Excited about that. I know most of the people in this room are as well. Absolutely. <laughs> Got a homecoming coming. And good weather for it, right? It's tailgate? Oh, yeah. On Sunday, things are looking nice and clear. Saturday, I wouldn't try anything, but Sunday, almost 60 degrees. It's going to be really nice to be outside doing fall activities or whatever you want to do. <laughs> I'm so happy that the hot weather is going to be gone. No more humidity. No more AC, just relax in the nice cool weather with some candles. Definitely fall weather oh coming boy. our way. And sweatshirts. I mean, sweatshirts. I just want to wear a sweatshirt. And, and sweaters. Flannels. Oh, and flannels. Uggs. I'm going to need my Timberlands, too, for the snow. Yeah. How about that interview, Seth? That was awesome. You know, it was, it was nice to sit down with him and talk a little bit, learning more about how he feels his... His time as mayor has gone so far, what he's got planned for the future. Yeah. He's a really cool guy, you know? You it's cool having say. such a young mayor, like seeing his point of view of politics. It's awesome. It's yeah. really cool. Yeah. Representing pretty much our generation yeah. here. Great leadership in Oswego coming this way. Yeah, yeah. no, seriously. And all the yeah. projects, it looks awesome. You know, one thing he touched on was the uh, was the roads. I don't know if you've noticed being yeah. out there on the roads, oh they're all paved now. Yep. You're, not, you're not hitting the potholes anymore. The potholes, anymore. Oh the God. deadly potholes, checking if you have a tire left. <laughs> they, um, it actually wrecked part of my car last year. No way. Yes, really? I had to go get that fixed over the summer. Oh <laughs> yeah. Hopefully we actually get a Taco Bell, too. A you Taco know? Bell would be very ideal yep. for Oswego. Mm -hmm. I'm just hoping the plows don't end up tearing up the pavement in the winter time. You know, let's let's hope this winter. What, what do you think this winter is going to be with like with all the snow coming up? Oh well, I've heard things that it's going to be one of the, a snowier one than last year. Last year we had a pretty nice break, but this year I hear it's not going to be as or if you don't like snow, it's not going to be as nice. Oh no. Well, if today was any indication, you know, it was a little it was a little, a little sticky outside little sticky. the past two days. Yeah. So. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I don't are know if I'm ready for down. snow. I'm ready for the cool weather, but not so much the snow. I'm not a big fan of the snow myself, but if you're a snow lover, you better get ready. Oh, God, <laughs> it's coming. It's better coming. get a shovel in your car in case you gotta, you know, dig dig it out in the parking lot. <laughs> Might as well get the skis and snowboards out too. I mean, I can go <laughs> down the the tube nice up ski to the, on the mountain Hook the right tube now. up to the back of the truck. I'm done with this summer weather. I'm yeah, no, it. I think we all are. I'll be honest with you, I don't mind the warmth, but, uh, no. but yeah, you know, it is fall. I mind fall. the warmth and the humidity. Yeah. Not a fan. Well, anyway, that's our report for tonight. Be sure to stay tuned for Lakeside View. Thank you for watching, everyone, and have a great night. We're actually watching the Media Summit Red Carpet Show at 2 o'clock on Wednesday, October 17th on WTOP 10. What would happen if, if I had to pick up the phone, call 911 for one of my family members or one of my neighbors? What would I do if, if no one was on the other end to respond? What if there was no 911? So you can be a part of the solution. Anybody can be a firefighter, male, female, younger, older. We are school teachers. We are leaders in business. It's me, you, anyone that wants to be. There is no typical firefighter. So, what would you bring to my company? What do you need? I need problem-solving skills. I got through high school without a car, a phone, or a computer. No college degree, though. Not yet, but life's taught me a lot, and I'm ready for more. Well, you're not the typical kind of candidate that I hire. But you are exactly what I'm looking for. Your company could be missing out on the candidates it needs most. Learn how to find a great pool of untapped talent at gradsoflife.org.